Konosuba, how would you love to live in an RPG-like world? A loser boy gets to embark on this journey with his dysfunctional team, trying to work and make money in this new world. As Satu Kazuma heads home after purchasing a limited edition version of a game, he encounters a girl in imminent danger of being hit by a speeding truck. Acting quickly, he pushes her to safety, but is transported to a peculiar dimension. Here, the goddess Aqua informs him that he has passed away. Kazuma thought his death was heroic because he believed he saved a girl from being hit by a truck. However, Aqua corrects him, revealing that it was just a tractor, which would have stopped for the girl anyway. Kazuma's shock at the misunderstanding caused his demise, much to the amusement of everyone, even his family and Aqua herself. After laughing off her stress, much to Kazuma's dismay, Aqua reveals her dissatisfaction with Heaven's boredom. She persuades him to join her in an RPG-like world to combat a Devil King terrorizing it, to the extent that even the local deceased refused to reincarnate there. She then explains how he can receive powerful items or abilities in this new world, with the language automatically implanted in his mind. However, Kazuma notices her attempt to conceal a warning in the manual about the potential risk of his brain getting damaged. Aqua convinces him to ignore the warning signs and gives him multiple options of abilities to choose from. As Kazuma sifts through a stack of leaflets, he grows increasingly frustrated by Aqua's impatience. Out of spite, he selects her as his cheat item. In response, an angel appears, assuming Aqua's role of managing the dead and informing Kazuma that the gods will grant any wish upon his success. Aqua is sad about this decision but there is nothing she could do about it. Meanwhile, Kazuma feels good that he is able to get back at Aqua for making fun of him. They are then magically transported to Axel, leaving Aqua in a panic. The new angel taking the place of Aqua reminds them that they have the option of asking God for anything if they defeat the Devil King. As Kazuma adjusts to the excitement of being in another world, he realizes that the frantic Aqua cannot assist and can't return until the defeat of the Devil King. The duo heads to the Adventurer Guild, the typical starting point for adventurers in games. However, when a ruffian directs them to the receptionist counter, Kazuma learns they can't register without paying a fee. As they worry about their next move, Aqua spots a priest and approaches him, claiming she's the goddess of the Axis Order and demanding money. To her dismay, the priest belongs to the rival Eris Order, worshipping the junior goddess Eris. Despite this, the priest still gives Aqua money out of pity. After making the payment, Luna, the receptionist, elucidates the adventurer classes and card system. However, when a crystal ball analyzes their stats, Kazuma realizes he can only become a generic adventurer. In contrast, Aqua, with her impressive stats, has the option to be an archpriest, astonishing the entire guild. The two enjoy carefree weeks working as construction laborers, bonding with their fellow workers over drinks during dinner and enduring nights in stinking stables. Eventually, they remember their need for adventuring. Appalled by Aqua's habit of sleeping until nearly noon and complaining about the financial struggles of novice adventurers who can only afford lodging in stables, Kazuma can't help but feel a sense of irony as he spends a significant amount of time observing her peacefully sleeping in her pajamas. When Aqua finally wakes up, Kazuma accuses her of lying that the town was troubled, when it was actually very calm. Aqua responds by telling him that they were far from where the Devil King resided. Armed only with a short sword, Kazuma embarks with Aqua on their first quest, to defeat five giant toads within a tight three-day deadline. As Kazuma finds himself fleeing for his life in the grasslands outside Axel, pursued by one of the giant toads capable of devouring livestock or people whole, Aqua laughs at Kazuma and his predicament. However, when she starts listing the conditions for rescuing him, the giant toad suddenly changes course and snatches her up instead. Because giant toads remain stationary while slowly consuming their prey, Kazuma seizes the opportunity to slay it and save Aqua. As Aqua clings to him, tears of gratitude streaming down her face, Kazuma can't help but feel repulsed by the giant toad's saliva covering her. Determined to earn back Kazuma's respect, Aqua rushes towards a pink-colored giant toad and attempts to defeat it with her powerful god blow punch, only to find that her attack is ineffective. The giant toad swiftly engulfs her, leaving Kazuma with no choice but to rescue her again. While enjoying a meal of fried toad back at the Adventurer Guild that evening, Aqua proposes recruiting new party members despite Kazuma's reservations. The next day, 
they posted a recruitment advertisement seeking someone from an advanced class but received no response. Just as they contemplate lowering their standards, a petite girl with red eyes introduces herself in a superb display of Chunibyu as the archwizard Megumin steps forward and offers to join their party before collapsing from hunger. As Kazuma engages in a playful tussle with Megumin over the eye patch she wears for added flair, Aqua elaborates on how crimson demons, like Megumin, are renowned for their exceptional magical abilities. After ensuring Megumin has eaten, they venture outside town to resume their quest against the giant toads. As Aqua channels her powerful god Requiem against a menacing gray giant toad, she again finds herself swallowed whole by the creature. Meanwhile, Megumin begins her incantations for her explosive magic, unleashing a devastating blast that reduces a distant purple giant toad to nothing but a smoking crater. However, the explosion rouses another nearby giant toad from its slumber. Exhausted from casting the spell, Megumin cannot evade being consumed by the newly awakened creature, prompting Kazuma to spring into action and rescue both girls. With their combined efforts, they complete the quest. As they're carried back to town, Megumin reveals that due to the immense power of her explosion magic, she can only cast it once a day before succumbing to exhaustion. Even with this effect, her obsession with explosion magic is so intense that she refuses to learn other spells. Meanwhile, Aqua proudly boasts of mastering all Archpriest magic and various party skills. Frustrated with Megumin's single-mindedness, Kazuma attempts to distance himself from her, only to be thwarted by her dramatic outburst in the streets, forcing him to keep her by his side reluctantly. While the girls are away bathing, Kazuma takes the opportunity to claim the modest rewards from their quest and reflects on his frustration at still being too low level to tackle more challenging quests. Just then, a crusader named Darkness approaches and offers to join their party, presenting Kazuma with a new opportunity to strengthen their group. Kazuma notices Darkness getting excited about the idea that he had some slimy play with Aqua and Megaman. He listens as Darkness admits she's strong but not great at hitting targets. Kazuma then tries to discourage her. But Darkness is even more determined to join when she hears about the potential hardships their party might face. When they arrive at the Adventurer Guild the next day, Aqua is flaunting her nature's beauty skill. Kazuma brushes it off as just a party trick. Megaman tells him he can learn skills by watching others demonstrate them. But she gets upset when he refers to her as a lowly girl. Darkness arrives with a thief named Chris, who offers to teach Kazuma thief skills in exchange for some bubbly. The trio heads onto the streets, and Chris demonstrates his stealing skills by taking Kazuma's purse. Chris offers Kazuma the challenge of taking back either her dagger or his purse from her after learning the stealing skill. To make it more challenging, she holds two handfuls of rocks. However, Kazuma ends up stealing her panties instead, which he excitedly waves around. Kazuma's actions embarrassed Chris and left Darkness stunned. They head back to the guild, where Chris tearfully tells the story of Kazuma trading his purse and her valuables for her underwear, which tarnishes Kazuma's reputation. Kazuma then showcases his steel ability by snatching Megumin's underwear. Darkness expresses her wish to join the group again, but finds joy in being turned down again. On the other hand, Kazuma's team members agree for Darkness to join them. Once again, Kazuma attempts to scare Darkness and Megumin by telling them they must face the Devil King. Despite this revelation, Darkness and Megumin still decide to stick with him, much to his surprise. A staff member of the Adventurer's Guild, Luna, issues an urgent quest, causing chaos as townsfolk scramble for safety while adventurers gather outside the city gates. Kazuma, bewildered, discovers their mission, capturing a swarm of flying cabbages heading toward Axel. Darkness struggles to hit anyone with her broadsword as the adventurers rush to harvest the valuable vegetables. Instead, she selflessly shields injured adventurers, even as her armor and clothing are torn apart. While the others admire Darkness for her noble resilience, Kazuma recognizes it as masochistic enjoyment. Megumin ultimately ends the chaos with a powerful explosion, wiping out the swarm and tossing the adventurers around. Kazuma manages to steal plenty of cabbages but becomes annoyed when Aqua uses her nature's beauty skill which he had previously dismissed as useless, to preserve the cabbages with clean water and heal the injured. Later that night, everyone delights in fried cabbage, and Darkness officially joins Kazuma's party. Kazuma is not happy about this development. Next, 
Kazuma dives into the world of magic and learns how to conjure elemental creations. Meanwhile, Darkness and Megaman use their rewards from the Cabbage Harvest to upgrade their gear. Darkness buys a new suit of armor, and Megaman invests in a magic manatite rod. However, Aqua's cabbage yield isn't as profitable as she hoped. Luna informs her that cheap lettuces have mixed in, reducing its value. With little reward for her efforts, Aqua finds herself in debt, having overspent already. To cover her expenses, Aqua pleads with Kazuma for help. When her plea falls, she blackmailed him to settle her debts at the guild hall, despite Kazuma's modest fortune from the harvest. Kazuma ditches his jersey for a more fitting fantasy attire the next day. With Aqua and Megaman still recovering from their encounter with the giant toads, he searches for more straightforward quests. However, he quickly learns that the presence of one of the Devil King's generals near Axel has driven all the weak monsters into hiding. Now, only life-threatening quests remain, posing a significant challenge for them. Over the next few weeks, Kazuma joins Megumin as she practices explosion magic at an old castle outside the city to avoid disturbing anyone with the noise. He helps carry her back when she gets tired. Meanwhile, Aqua takes on tasks like making artificial flowers and selling vegetables, and Darkness returns home to focus on her training. Kazuma begins to entertain the idea of giving up on defeating the Devil King, disregarding Aqua's longing to return home. So with her magic. Between an In a heated exchange, he insults Aqua, causing her to cry. Shortly after, Luna calls upon all adventurers to gather at the city gates. There, Beldia the Dullahan, the Devil King's general, expresses his fury over someone consistently casting explosion spells on his castle. While the other adventurers suspect an innocent female wizard, Megaman steps forward boldly. She proudly proclaims herself as the top wizard in the city and sees this as an opportunity to confront Beldia, despite his simple wish for her to cease casting explosions. Megaman summons Aqua for assistance, but before Aqua can act, Beldia casts a premonition of death spell on Megaman, destined to take effect in a week. However, darkness intervenes and becomes the target of the curse. At first, Beldia was happy that Megaman would have to suffer from guilt. However, she later becomes troubled when Darkness fantasizes about blackmailing Megaman to do embarrassing things while Kazuma restrains her. After casting the curse, Beldia declares that he will lift it only if Megaman can reach his castle, which his minions heavily guard. Once he departs, Megaman and Kazuma resolve to raid the castle. However, Aqua surprises them by breaking the curse on Darkness using the sacred break spell, leaving Kazuma and Megaman astonished and the other adventurers overjoyed. Kazuma is worried about their dull fantasy life again, while Aqua insists on taking quests to repay her debts. Since Kazuma is against her taking up a quest involving a turf war between a manticore and a griffin, Aqua decides to purify a lake near Axel to drive away the brutal alligators in it. Even though Aqua can purify water with a touch, cleansing an entire lake requires half a day, leaving her vulnerable to monster attacks. She asks the rest of the party to guard her to ensure her safety. However, Kazuma opts for a different approach by renting a small iron cage from the guild and locking Aqua inside it. Despite feeling embarrassed, Aqua remains quiet. The party then transports the cage to Riverhead Lake and lowers it into the shallows, allowing Aqua to release her goddess essence. At the same time, Kazuma, Megaman, and Darkness watch from a safe distance. After a conversation about restroom breaks, the brutal alligators surround Aqua as she desperately casts purification. The reptiles fiercely attack the cage, tossing her around. The lake is cleansed five hours later, and the brutal alligators retreat. Aqua, now traumatized, refuses to leave the damaged cage, requesting the others to transport her back to the city inside it. Swordmaster Mitsurugi Kiyuya, reincarnated from Japan, wields the cursed sword Gram, which was given exclusively to him by Aqua. He returns to Axel with his companions Kremia and Fio after a quest to subdue an ancient dragon. Upon arriving, he finds his beloved goddess being taken away, and he breaks open her cage. Kazuma subsequently reminds Aqua of her divine status, although she struggles to remember Mitsurugi. Mitsurugi approaches Kazuma and angrily calls him out for bringing Aqua into this world. He accused Kazuma of locking Aqua in a cage and coercing her to sleep in a stable. Mitsurugi told Kazuma's teammates that they could join his party. Surprisingly, they all rejected this offer because they did not like Mitsurugi. 
Left with no other option, Mitsurugi challenged Kazuma to a duel, with Aqua as the reward for the winner. Kazuma accepted and then used a surprise attack to distract Mitsurugi. He then steals Graham and uses it to knock out Mitsurugi. When Kremea and Fio wanted to make a big deal out of it, Kazuma threatened to use steel on them to scare them. Aqua angrily confronts Luna the next day because a significant portion of her quest reward was deducted to cover the cost of the cage Mitsurugi broke. Mitsurugi then comes along and accuses Kazuma of his mistreatment of women, as Chris had informed him, only to be punched by a furious Aqua, who demands he pay for the damaged cage. Mitsurugi, upon learning that Kazuma sold Graham, leaves with his companions. Luna broadcasts a message for all adventurers to gather at the city gates, where Beldia expresses his disappointment that they did not visit his castle. Kazuma becomes furious with Megumin and Aqua after discovering they've been practicing explosion magic daily at the abandoned castle. Beldia is angry at them for letting Darkness die because of his curse. However, Darkness surprises everyone by stepping forward, touched by Beldia's compliment of calling her a modal knight, revealing she's still alive. Aqua laughs at Beldia's failure to realize his curse has been lifted, causing significant pain to Beldia. Astounded to encounter someone of equal power to Axel, Beldia summons an army of undead knights and commands them to attack the city's inhabitants. However, the undead knights target Aqua instead, drawn to her divine presence for salvation. Aqua and Kazuma charge toward Beldia, then quickly step aside, allowing Megumin to unleash her explosion magic on the clustered undead. This action caused the other adventurers to give her new nicknames. Although Beldia survives the explosion, he now faces a group of adventurers. Using a unique tactic, he tosses his head into the air to gain a better view of the battlefield and swiftly defeats them all. Mitsurugi was now weaponless. Darkness rushes to halt Beldia's progress, but fails to land a single blow. Beldia's onslaught damages her armor and clothes, sending Darkness into another daydreaming episode. Capitalizing on the distraction, Kazuma attempts to immobilize Beldia by creating water and freezing him in place. However, he fails to steal Beldia's sword due to their differing levels of skill and power. Kazuma recalls that undeeds are weak against water, so he initiates the process of creating water along with the other mages. While Beldia evades the water, Kazuma convinces Aqua to cast Sacred Create Water, causing a flood strong enough to destroy the city's outer walls. Holy crap! <laughs> Taking advantage of Beldia's weakened state, Kazuma steals his head. Afterwards, Aqua purifies Beldia. Darkness offers prayers for the adventurers who fell in the battle, only to discover, to her embarrassment, that Aqua had already resurrected them. The following day at the guild, the adventurers gather for a celebratory drink. Kazuma informs his party that with their newfound wealth, he plans to return to his reclusive lifestyle. However, Luna reveals that their party is honored with a special reward for defeating Beldia, but they are also held responsible for the damages caused by the Flood, putting them in significant debt. This revelation reinforces Kazuma's resolve to defeat the Devil King and find a way to escape their trapped world. On a freezing winter day, while fellow adventurers relish their triumph over Belgium, Kazuma yearns for the extra coins to clear his party's hefty debt. While perusing the quest board, Kazuma dismisses missions to tackle white wolves and one-punch bears, much to the chagrin of Darkness and Megaman. However, his attention is piqued by a task involving scouting out a mysterious entity, the Destroyer. Kazuma and Aqua opt for the challenge of subjugating snow sprites, a decision that Megaman is not too excited about. While walking down to the forest where the snow sprites often gather, Kazuma makes a move on the snow sprites. Meanwhile, Aqua skillfully traps them in a bottle to cool down during the scorching summer months. Meanwhile, Megaman exhausts herself after destroying eight sprites with her explosive magic. Suddenly, the Winter Shogun, guardian of the snow sprites, materializes before them. Ignited by the imagery of Japanese reincarnities, Darkness eagerly engages the Shogun-like guardian, only to render her sword useless. Aqua sets free the captured snow sprites and suggests to her companions that they should drop their weapons and perform dogeza, a traditional Japanese gesture of profound apology, to seek forgiveness. However, Darkness, consumed by pride, refuses to comply. In a desperate attempt to rectify the situation, Kazuma rushes forward to push Darkness's head down in a gesture of submission. Unfortunately, in his haste, 
he forgets to drop his sword, leading to a fatal mistake as the Winter Shogun beheads him. In another dimension, Eris expresses her sympathy to Kazuma. He complains about his new life after reincarnation and his party members, who are safe after the Winter Shogun's departure. However, as Eris is about to send him back to Japan for reincarnation, Kazuma unexpectedly breaks down in tears, missing his friends dearly. Aqua intervenes, summoning Kazuma's soul back to his body where she had already cast a resurrection spell. She defies Eris's rule against opening the afterlife door by threatening to take away her chest pads. Back in the fantasy world, his friends welcomed him joyfully. However, Kazuma felt reluctant to thank Aqua for bringing him back. Kazuma had now concluded they were all not strong enough to embark on any winter quests. Upon returning to the guild, Aqua brought out a hidden snow sprite. Kazuma asked that she hand it over so he could claim the reward, but Aqua refused, intending to use it as a refrigerator. Kazuma then compares his companions to Eris and concludes that Eris is the real hero. Aqua is warming herself next to a campfire outside the icy stables when Kazuma intervenes to prevent her from using his tracksuit as fuel. Later, they visit Wiz's shop, where Kazuma has to continuously prevent Aqua from purifying the lich shop owner. This is because the shop owner insults the Axis Order and reveals herself as one of the eight Devil King's generals. Unlike Belgium, who had a habit of peeking up Aqua's dress by throwing his head at her feet, Wiz never harmed people. Instead, she simply helps maintain the magic barrier around the Devil King's castle. While enjoying the tea Aqua demanded from Wiz, Kazuma expresses his desire to learn Lich's skills. Wiz then teaches him Drain Touch. However, when Kazuma demonstrates it on Aqua, she is nearly purified until he intervenes to stop her. After the ordeal, Wiz passes on a commission from a real estate broker to purge the ghosts, infesting an uninhabited mansion previously owned by a nobleman. They are allowed to live in the mansion as part of the assignment. The party moves in and cleans the dust while Aqua shares the life story of the mansion's haunting ghost. As night falls, Aqua discovers that someone has drunk her cherished bubbly. She charges around the mansion angrily, casting Turn Undead on any ghost she encounters. In the dead of night, Kazuma suddenly wakes up and is about to rush to the bathroom. But to his surprise, he finds himself surrounded by dolls. He dashes to Aqua's room, followed by the floating dolls. However, upon arrival, he discovers Megaman hiding there, equally looking for how to go to the toilet. With no assistance from Aqua or Darkness, the two argue over bathroom rights until they're interrupted by more dolls crashing in through the window. As they make a desperate dash for the toilet, Kazuma hurriedly drags Megumin along, not even waiting for her to pull up her pants when the dolls make a return. They lock themselves in another room only to find the dolls attempting to break in. In a panic, Megumin chants her incantations for explosion magic while Kazuma tries to find a way out. However, to their relief, they soon discover that Aqua has already purified all the dolls possessed by ghosts. The following day, Kazuma and Aqua head to the guild to claim their rewards for clearing out the ghosts. However, when Luna reveals that the ghosts invaded the mansion because a magic barrier had been cast, preventing them from entering the nearby public cemetery, Kazuma realizes it was Aqua's doing all along. Feeling the heat, Aqua comes clean, admitting she erected the barrier to avoid purifying the cemetery daily. In light of this revelation, they decide to decline the reward. Later, while Kazuma is tidying up the mansion yard, Wiz arrives to pay respects at a grave. However, Kazuma's peaceful moment is interrupted when he has to intervene to stop his tracksuit from being used as firewood. As Megumin and Darkness engage in a board game resembling chess in the living room, Aqua persistently asks Kazuma for the sofa seat near the fireplace. Kazuma reluctantly agrees out of pity for her. The following day, while wandering downtown, Kazuma spots Dust and Keith hanging around an alleyway. They confide in him that they're mustering the courage to enter a cafe managed by Sukubi, a place exclusive to male adventurers. Kazuma joins them in entering the cafe where he's seated next to the ruffian. The receptionist, Sukubus, then breaks down how the cafe provides Sukubi, who offers men lifelike dreams of their desired erotic experiences in exchange for a portion of their vitality. While speaking with Succubus, Kazuma learns that he can choose anybody to be his partner. Kazuma writes down in his request form that he would prefer a mature woman who doesn't have a sexual experience. By the time Kazuma returned to home, he met his other companions cooking crabs for dinner. The crabs were sent by Darkness's family. Everyone was excited to have a taste of it. Aqua then suggested they enjoy the meal with the hot bubbly from the crab shell. 
Kazuma wasn't pleased with the suggestion because he had other plans. He did not want anything to stop him from dreaming later at night. Kazuma was the first to go to bed, leaving the rest to continue having fun. Aqua started acting like Destroyer. At the same time, Kazuma was too anxious even to sleep. He goes over to have his bath and falls asleep inside the bathtub. Kazuma sees darkness entering the bath with his clothes off a few minutes later. In Kazuma's mind, his erotic dream had begun. So he instructs darkness to wash his back. On the other hand, darkness felt that his sexual fantasies of submission were about to come to pass. Her only worry was them getting caught by Aqua or Megumin but there was no way she would allow this one to slide. As Darkness attends to his requests, Aqua gives in to his increasingly abrupt demands. However, as Darkness proceeds to dry him off, Aqua suddenly sounds the alarm about an intruder. Kazuma hurries into the corridors and discovers the newbie succubus, intended to induce dreams, trapped in the magic barrier erected around the mansion by Aqua. Realizing he's not dreaming, Kazuma helps the succubus escape, leading Aqua, Megumin, and Darkness, believing he's been charmed, to punch him in frustration. The following day, Kazuma initially feigns being under the succubus's influence as he reconciles with Darkness. However, he suddenly changes his mind, accusing Darkness of initiating their encounter. Meanwhile, Luna issues an urgent broadcast regarding the impending arrival of the mobile fortress destroyer near Axel. As Luna urges everyone to leave town and calls upon adventurers to gather at the guild, Aqua and Megaman hastily gather their belongings to escape from the rampaging mobile fortress destroyer. Darkness grimly predicts that it will devastate everything in its wake. However, Kazuma refuses to abandon his newfound home and is determined to find a way to save it. After a discussion with fellow adventurers, Kazuma, encouraged by Chris, devises a plan to thwart the impending arrival of the ancient weapon in Axel within an hour. Everyone, the emergency quest will now begin! <laughs> While construction workers hastily erect barricades outside the city walls, Darkness stands watch. During this time, she confides in Kazuma, revealing her name and noble lineage and disclosing her duty to protect her territory. Aqua ascends the city walls and shatters its magical barrier with a sacred break spell as the destroyer looms into view. This action allows Megumin and Wiz to unleash powerful explosions on its legs, causing it to come to a halt. However, as the other adventurers celebrate their achievement, the Destroyer warns about its impending self-detonation. In a surprising turn, Darkness doesn't flee but charges toward the Destroyer with masochistic excitement. Seeing her bold move, the other adventurers join in, believing she's attempting to halt the detonation. Some, however, are motivated to save the Succubus Cafe. Meanwhile, Kazuma leaves Megumin outside the fortress and leads Aqua and Wiz to search for the control room. Inside, they stumble upon the remains of the head researcher responsible for constructing the destroyer. They discover in his diary the tragic tale of the head researcher's desperate bid to escape execution by initiating the construction of the fortress. However, his plan backfired when the destroyer went on a rampage, annihilating the kingdom that commissioned its creation. Tragically, he spent the remainder of his life trapped on board the relentless destroyer. Wiz employs Drain Touch on Kazuma to replenish her magical energy enabling her to randomly teleport the Coronatite, the Destroyer's power source, at Kazuma's guidance. However, the Destroyer has generated excessive heat, threatening the city. As everyone evacuates, Kazuma draws power from Aqua to recharge Megaman, who the ruffian brings along. This empowers her to obliterate the Destroyer with her second explosion of the day, shattering it into pieces. Dream in this world! My ultimate destructive spell! Soon after the residents of Axel resume their daily routines, knights from the royal capital arrive. However, tensions arise when Kazuma and fellow adventurers, accompanied by a prosecutor, encounter them at the guild. Shockingly, they accuse Kazuma of treason, alleging that the coronatite he ordered to be teleported obliterated the local governor's mansion. Kazuma leads his group to Wiz's shop, where Union hides behind shelves before boldly stepping out to challenge Megaman. When Wiz reveals that Yunyun frequents the shop just to see Megaman, Yunyun, feeling embarrassed, hastily grabs a choker from the shelves, pretending to be a customer. Darkness invites Yunyun to visit their mansion, 
prompting Yunyun to inquire if it's merely a polite gesture. Megumin, growing impatient, begins shaking Yunyun, causing her to drop the choker and sending items flying towards a frustrated Kazuma, who seeks solace. Amidst the chouse, Kazuma picks up the choker, rumored to grant wishes. With Kazuma clueless about his wish, the girls take the blame, but vow to assist in removing the choker. Except for Aqua. She argues she's not at fault, and can simply resurrect Kazuma if needed. Kazuma argues that dying means he won't return to fight the Devil King and clear their debt, prompting Aqua to agree to do whatever he wants to fulfill his wish. Returning to the mansion, Kazuma seizes the opportunity, instructing Wiz to let him nap on her lap, asking Darkness to exercise without armor, requesting Aqua to fetch yakisoba bread and soda, and challenging Megumin and Yunyun to a game of strip rock paper scissors. You ate the other half. Despite Megumin and Yunyun deliberately tying each round, Kazuma decides that any more ties will lead to them removing their clothing. When Yunyun loses the next round, she angrily starts tearing off Megumin's clothes. Towards the end of the day, the choker was still there, and Kazuma had kept on with his awkward demands. With Aqua fanning him, Darkness doing squats, and Yunyun and Megumin donning Bunny Girl and School Bloomer's costumes, respectively, Kazuma continues to make obnoxious requests. The following day, Kazuma instructs Weez, Megumin, and Yunyun to bath a him while Aquacrete is a natural hot spring in the bathroom. Kazuma takes advantage of the situation by watching Darkness bathe while harassing Megumin. However, his antics lead to an unexpected consequence when the hot spring erupts beneath him, resulting in a painful scalding of his genitals. Later that night, Kazuma insists that Wiz kiss him, but the girls reach their limit. Aqua, furious, confronts him, emphasizing the urgency as only one day remains before the choker claims his life. Kazuma, unable to think beyond trivial and demeaning desires, remains obstinate. Hours pass, and Megumin confides in Yunyun, declaring Kazuma a friend and igniting her resolve to remove the choker. On the final day, a serene Kazuma bids farewell to the girls prompting them to embrace him in a sad moment. In a surprising confession, Kazuma jests, claiming he values them solely for their physical attributes. He shares a nostalgic memory with Aqua about observing her sleeping during their time in the stable. However, when Aqua reacts with distress, it's revealed the choker has already loosened, fulfilled by their comforting embrace. Angered by Kazuma's antics, the girls jokingly suggest putting the choker back on him, resulting in his exasperated departure to Eris. That's all, folks. Thanks for watching. Remember to like and subscribe for more amazing content.